So guidelines, you want to make sure that you get full names, ages, address, and occupations of suspects and victims. With the suspects, you want to make sure that you have a description. Per AP Style 2020, um, you want to make sure that you're delicate on the issue of race. So if the color of their skin actually does matter in regards to being a suspect, then yes, you will have to put that in, or their ethnicity, whatever is relevant. If it's relevant, then yes, you will need it. If not, then you will not need it, and you go off of the description or the city that they live in or the age that they are or their occupation and so forth. Sometimes their full names will get the, the idea across. With full names, too, you want to make sure that you have a middle initial. I think of John Smith and how, how common that name is. You want to make sure that you have a middle initial, especially uh, for victims, because you don't want a mother reading that John Smith died in a fiery car crash if it's not her son. So you want to make sure that you have the actual full name with the middle middle initial. Uh, you want to also make sure that you have the cause of fatalities or injuries. So you want to describe injuries and what hospital the victims were taken to. Especially now as most of these stories, rather than just running the next day, are actually continuous on, tr on Twitter. So you want to make sure that you have the correct injuries and the correct uh, location of the hospital. If we think about the Kobe Bryant um, accident, uh, they had multiple, multiple releases of who was in that helicopter and, and falsely said a few people weren't that were in there. So you want to make sure that you are as um, as exact as you can be and you have truthful information. You want to also have the location and time of the incident and then you want to also want to have what happened so you can understand the sequence of events so that you can lay it out in a way that makes sense to the reader. Okay, uh, guidelines continued. So uh, arrests and charges are f filed. So if you if people have been arrested, you want to find out where they're being held. When will they be arranged? If there's a bail set, you want to make sure you have that amount. You want to also make sure you get eyewitness accounts. So you want to take in comments from neighbors. You're going to go to the scene. You're going to figure out who was there, what happened. Then you're going to find an area where the people were from, and you're going to start going door to door, or you're start making calls. You're going to start figuring out who saw what, who was related to who, um, and that sort of thing. So again, like we touched on a little bit physical descriptions. So these are actually in regards to um, describing people in far as in, in so far as grammar. So just recently, actually in 2020, the Associated Press changed its writing style. So you're going to be capitalizing the B in the term black when referring to people in a racial, ethnic, or cultural context. Uh, this will also happen with indigenous. So indigenous people are a reference to the original inhabitants of a place, and that will also be capitalized. Uh, quite opposite, white, which also describes individuals, will not be capitalized. Um, and if you want to look up the reasonings um, uh, that they justified on this, uh, then you can go ahead and click the link. And this is a 2020 update, so unless it changes, this is what they have so far. Types of crimes and coverage. So we have motor vehicle accidents, burglaries and robberies, homicides, and fires. So motor vehicle accidents. These are usually hard news news stories unless there's an unusual angle. So you want to make sure that you cover the speed, destination, and directions of the vehicles so that you can kind of get a good layout of what happened. You want to hear the cause of the accident, arrest, citations, and damages. So you want to make sure for citations that you get the police report. Um, you want to get the victim's use of equipment, you know, um, how did they drive, what were they driving, what were they like when they were driving, were they under the influence, uh, weather was related, uh, did anybody try to help one another, who, you know, who was there at the scene, and that sort of thing. <clears throat> burglaries and robberies. So a burglary involves an entry into a building with the intent to commit a crime. A robbery involves stealing with violence or threat. So a robbery is going to be someone with a weapon that they use and or a threat they administer and they steal something. So when you're recording these, you want to get what was taken, the type of weapon, and how the entry is made. How the entry was made, when you get those three answers to whatever crime you're covering, then you're going to be able to justify it as a burglary or a robbery. You also want to make sure that you're able to get the, that blotter out and, and see you know, how frequent this crime has been in this area or in this community in order to kind of start a more investigative piece or to just kind of follow up with what has been going on. 
Homicides. So homicide is a legal term for killing. Murder is a term for a premeditated homicide. And manslaughter is homicide without premeditation. So when we say premeditated, it was planned, right? So when you're covering homicides, you want to know the weapon. You want to know any kind of wounds and the official cause of death death as well as arrest details. As far as clues and motive, you will have to figure that out through your own interviewing process and research. And again, when we look at Edna Buchanan and her writing style, uh, you will see that she was able to, she, she wrote for the Miami Herald and she was able to kind of create this world that she was so uh, involved in, like she lived and breathed. She knew um, was able to connect and just continually ha um, just hammer out like just questions and never gave up continually called people she was just an incredible reporter is a incredible rep reporter and um, it's just very interesting to look at how she handled crime reporting so fires now this is very typical of our area specifically from August to roughly October November area time so you want to see when the time the fire started number of fire companies responding who responded you want to know who was evacuated, injuries, fatalities that caused the fire. If you're in an area like SoCal, majority of the time um, it could be related to a transponder blowing, blowing the winds, Santa Ana winds. Um, there could be malpractice or um, there could be, um, it could be planned by someone or set. But you want to make sure that you have that down um, and you will get usually that quote or that estimated quote from a PIO officer. Okay, uh, the estimated cost of damages again could come from the insurance companies if you get a hold of them and they start and you start calling them the presence and condition of smoke detectors. That's something that if you're able to be near the scene, you can definitely interview the firefighters there. You also want to get a hold of the fire inspection record and that will be public, so you can check that out. You, <clears throat> in regards to court stories, there are a bunch of different terms we're going to get into. Uh, but when you're sitting in a court story, everything's public because it is open to the public. You want to make sure that rather than just writing as well as everything that's being said, you want to get the reactions and facial exp expressions and get um, gestures of who is being interviewed, who is doing the interviewing. You want to use descriptive detail. You want to state the exact charges in a story. You want to avoid jargon, so it's best to come in there and use uh, translate all of the legal terms into your own language or elementary language. You want to definitely include the name of the court where the hearing is being held and get comments for the defendants. You want to include how long the jury debated as well as write the next step. So if this is the first step in the case, then you want to make sure that you include that the next step will be a month from now at this, at this courthouse or so forth. So criminal and civil cases. So criminal cases are a violation of any laws regulating crime. For instance, uh, there is not a, the, the civil cases, there's not a prosecu prosecution by the government. So the plaintiff or person, group, business, or institution, or a government, government body brings a claim of harm against the defendant or another person or group. The most common types of cases to appear in a civil court are uh, contract disputes, property disputes, class action cases, torts, or complaints against the city. So these are civil cases. Civil courts handle a wide variety of cases involving numerous legal issues. So civil cases can involve um, claims for such things as personal injury, battery, negligence, defamation, medical malpractice, and fraud. <clears throat> when we talk criminal cases, these are again a violation of laws regulating crime. So a court proceeding in which a person who is charged with having committed or omitted an act against the community or state is brought to trial and either found not guilty or guilty in sentence. So criminal law deals with the behavior that is or can be construed as an offense against the public society or the state. So examples would be murder, assault, theft, and of course drunken driving. driving. So we have a couple courts we're going to go over. We have the federal court. Federal courts have jurisdiction over cases involving matters of the U.S. Constitution, federal tax, federal laws, and cases between people from different states. So we have the U.S. District Court, which is the lowest level, the U.S. Court of Appeals, there's 12 in the nation, and then the U.S. Supreme Court, which is the highest in the nation. State courts. So we have our state courts. Trial courts are the courts where the cases start. So in the trial courts, the lawyers present evidence and legal arguments to persuade the jury in a jury trial 
or the judge in a bench trial. Uh, the difference between the two courts is the judges. So in trial courts, there's one judge in the courtroom. So California has two types of state courts. We have trial courts that are also called superior courts. And then we also have appellate courts, which is made up the courts of appeal and the California Supreme Court. Okay. Then in a trial court, a general jurisdiction may hear any civil or criminal case that is not already exclusively within the jurisdiction of another court. An example would include the United States District's Court or on the federal level and the state level trial courts such as in uh, California Supreme Court or the uh, California Superior Court. Criminal court process. <clears throat> Misdeme misdemeanors are considered minor offenses that carry a potential penalty of up to one year in jail. Uh, felonies are, are more serious crimes punishable by more than a year in prison. So mis misdemeanors are a fine or under one year. Felonies are going to be uh, over a year in prison. So here's some court story tips. Never assume the reader is familiar with the case. You always explain the charges and background and describe defendants and witnesses. You want to specify the court where the proceeding is taking place, tell how long the jury deliberated in verdict stories, and you want to make sure overall that you tell a good story. Again, Edna Buchanan is quite the storyteller and was able to rearrange a lot of dense information into something that was... Um, inspiring to read. So uh, thank you for tuning in to our reporting on crime and if you have any questions uh, please let me know. Here's a uh, source. We have our uh, The Great Reporters book. If you look at page 33 it is a wonderful outline of Edna Buchanan and then here's our AP style book that just got updated 2020 to 2022. Okay thank you for tuning in.